he is. Well, my message today is entitled, Get to the King. Get to the King. And it is a message of urgency. So the inspiration for today's message comes from the book of Esther. And uh, some of us are reading through the Bible this year. And as one of my readings was in the book of Esther, and this message just leaped out to me. And uh, I, I, want, I want us to really hear what God is saying through this message. The only book in the Bible that does not mention or refer to God is Esther. Only book in the Bible that does not mention God's name. There are multiple reasons why God's name is not referred to, but the principal reason is to portray him working in the background. He's unseen. And that's applicable to your life. To my life. We don't always see what God is doing in our life, but He is working there in the background. He's in the background of your home. He's in the background of where you work. He's in the background while you're on the road. He's in the background, He's just unseen. And that's what we see in the book of Esther is the unseen God that is at work. Get to the king. The emphasis is on God's providence. What is providence? It's his unseen protective care for his people, whether spiritually or physically. God cares for you, and he is protecting you, and he is keeping you. The book of Esther does not directly mention God, but it clearly reveals God at work. His name may not be written in the book of Esther, but his fingerprints are all over it. As one current writer summarized it, she said this, the coincidences, the amazing reversals, and the poetic justice that led to the deliverance of the Jews in, per in Persia all proclaim the presence of God. And so we need to see, and I encourage you to take time this week and go back through and read the little book of Esther. And you will see God mightily at work. Father, today we pray that you will speak to us in this message. For it is a message of urgency. And one that we need to take to heart. Whether we hear this message in this church today. Or it's online in some capacity. May we understand that there is an urgency to get to the king. Bless now every hearer, and may we not be only hearers of the word, but may we be doers as well. In Christ's name we pray, and everyone said amen. Get to the king. It comes from events in the book of Esther, and to make a long story short about Esther, a nobleman named Haman, who hated Esther's uncle, and now he's, the newer translations call him a cousin. So I don't know if he's an uncle or a cousin, but Haman hated her, her uncle Mordecai. Now Mordecai was a man of God. And the man that hated him, Haman, Mordecai refused to bow down to him because Haman required whoever came into his presence to kneel to him and give him honor. Have you ever been in someone's presence like that? They just, they just demand of you the respect that they don't deserve, and they want you to, to just bow down practically and, and do obeisance to them? Well, Haman was a thousand times worse. He demanded in reality that everyone kneel in his presence, stand up, and give him honor. And if that's not egotistical, I don't know what is. But nevertheless, Mordecai refused to do it. Now here we see Haman, he's riding on his horse. And he just, he's exalted, he's up above everybody. And the man walking alongside of him is letting everybody know who Haman is. This is the great man, Haman. Show your respect to him. He deserves honor and glory. 
But you see, in this story, in Esther, Haman represents the devil. Jesus said, as, 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 as Eugene prayed today, the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. The devil's come to steal in your life and to kill and destroy if possible. That's why we got to get to the king. You got to get to the king. When Mordecai became aware of, of, of Haman's diabolical plot, his plot was to annihilate the Jews. He wanted, because of Mordecai, he just, he couldn't stand it. And so he devised a plot to annihilate the Jews. He hated the Jews with a passion. He wanted to kill every Jew from the oldest to the youngest, from men to women, from boys to girls, and from youngsters to infants. He wanted them all exterminated. He, he as the devil, came to steal, kill, and destroy. So when Mordecai became aware of Haman's diabolical plot, he sent word to Esther that there's a problem. So he urged Esther to go to the king. And you will read this in Esther 4 and verse 8. He said, beg for mercy and plead for help. Today, if there's ever been a time that we need to get to the king to beg for mercy and plead for help, it's today. Please hear me today. With what this nation is going through in a variety of areas of life, including the pandemic, in every area, it is time for the believer to get to the king and beg for mercy and to plead for help. Can you say amen? amen. Now this is Xerxes, the king. And in this story, he's a type of Christ. Because Esther was reluctant to go to the king, because unless she was invited into his presence, it meant death. Her death. That was the law of the Medes and Persians. You did not enter into the king's presence unless he tilted his scepter towards you and invited you to come. But I want to tell you, thank God that we have a king today that's made a way for us to come into his presence. And we can come at any time. And it's very important for us to get to the king. But you see... Esther was reluctant. She was reticent about going into the presence of the king because if she went in uninvited, it would cost her her life. But when Mordecai heard that Esther was reluctant to go to the king, he sent this word to her in Esther 4, verses 13 and 14. It says, he sent back this answer, do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. You see, that threat had gone out to extermin exterminate all Jews. It cannot be revoked, and she is a Jew. He said, don't think you're going to be safe just because you're in the king's house. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. It may not, God may not use you, but he's going to use someone to bring deliverance to his people. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to royal position or the kingdom for such a time as this. Every one of us are here at this time because God ordained it. You are alive at this time and in this place and in this nation and going through what we're going through. You might say, well, why, why me? Because God designed it. He ordained it. And we have an opportunity to respond and to choose to do the right thing. And that thing for us today is to get to the king. We've got to get into the king's presence. There is a killer that is at loose. There is a threat of extermination. Do you hear the voice of the spirit today? Can you hear what the spirit is saying to us today as God's people in America? There is a threat of death. There's a threat of extermination. There's a threat of extreme loss if we do not get to the king and beg for mercy and plead for his help. Can you say amen? amen. 
So after a time of fasting and praying, Queen Esther was, in, was invited into the king's presence. And as you know, Haman was exposed for the diabolical plot that he made against the Jews, which included Esther. And as a result, King Xerxes declared an edict to save the Jews. And after that was accomplished, he, exalt, he exalted Mordecai to the second highest position in the land. Now that's just in a nutshell. There's so much in the details to all of this. By the way, Mordecai was hung on the gallows that he had built for Mordecai. I mean, Haman, at least you're awake. Stay with me now and help me stay on track. So Haman was hung on the, on the scaffold that he had built for, 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 uh, for Mordecai. It was 75 feet in the air. He meant to expose that man and, and, and show to everybody his hatred and what he would do to those that oppose him. Well, you know what? God's already defeated Satan. He defeated him on that cross and made a show of him as well. So the question is today is, how does this apply to us? How does this story in the Old Testament apply to us? Well, the answer is really simple. Get to the king. If you want help, if you want resolution to the problem, if you want divine interference, inter intervention, get to the king. Beg for, for mercy and plead for divine intervention. Pray out to God. Save our people. Save our family. Save our friends. Save our neighbors. I'm not just talking about in a spiritual matter. I mean physically as well with what we're going through. Lord, we need your help. We're begging you. We're pleading with you. We're calling upon you. Intervene, Lord. Save. Save. Heal. Deliver. Set free, O oh Lord, our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, our classmates, people in general. O oh Lord, save us. Save us. Plead. For the preservation of life. Is this not an appropriate time to get to the king? If, if Esther had not got to the king, her people would have been annihilated. And God is calling upon you and I to intercede. He's calling upon you to call upon heaven for divine intervention. We are in a dark and perilous time. We are in a crisis. We are experiencing a worldwide part pandemic, and we must get to the king. We must get to the king and beg for mercy and plead for divine intervention. These TV dinner prayers don't work anymore. Oh, Lord, I pray God, okay, that's it. How many people on Facebook, they're calling out for people to pray, praying people, I pray, I put my little prayer icon on and move on. That ain't prayer. That's not prayer. Prayer is calling upon God. Prayer is divine communication. Prayer is seeking the face of God. Prayer is intent. It, it has purpose and, and it has resolve. I want God to do something for me. I want God to do something for others. I want God to do something for some situation. And it is time it, we need to beg we need to plead with God. We're not used to that. We're like, I don't beg for anything. Well, then you don't understand your situation. If you were being threatened with death with a gut, you'd be begging for your life. This is the same situation that we're talking about right now. Your life is depending, and others in your family, the circle of your friends are depending on your prayers. We're looking to King Jesus. This is the image we see today. We're not talking about Xerxes. We're talking about King of Kings and Lord of Lords. All hail King Jesus. Beg for mercy. Plead for divine intervention. As you know, we're only 12 days away from Christmas. The day that we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who 
came into the world almost 2,000 years ago. Well, he came to save. He came on that dark night there in Bethlehem. The night, how do we know it was night? Because it says the shepherds were watching their fields by night. And the heavens opened and the angels began to sing that this night a Savior has been born in Bethlehem. The Savior has come. This 2,000 years, he's king. The king came on that night. He was born in Bethlehem. And he lived his life and he gave his life so that we might have eternal life, so that we might have life in this world as well, the fullness of life. And so in light of our needs today, it's urgent that we get to the king. Only he has the power to grant life, eternal life, health and healing, salvation and deliverance. Each one of our family members is depending on us to get to the king. Who are you praying for? Are you really interceding? We are to pray for the unsaved. We must beg for mercy for those that are bound and shackled in addiction. We must plead for divine help for deliverance. For those that are dying, we must cry out for divine intervention for the preservation of life. Oh God, spare my mother. Oh God, spare my father. Oh God, spare my sister, my brother. Lord, spare my cousin. Spare my grandparents. Lord, my neighbor. Oh God, spare our sister in the Lord, our brother in the Lord. God, spare and cry out. It's no more just sitting and waiting and sitting. It's time to pray and to get to the king and divinely intervene. For the unsaved, we must get to the king. We must get to the king. We must get to the king, King Jesus. He will save us. He will help us. And he will divinely intervene. Can you say amen? So I want to encourage you today. Read through the gospels this week. And consider the response of Jesus to those who came to him. As I prepared this message, I, I knew that there was a host of people that we could discuss this morning about coming to him, those that, that got to the king. And so I just selected a few to share with you before we conclude this message today. And the first I want us to consider, consider is the man with leprosy. In the Gospel of Matthew, in chapter 8, verse 1, See, Jesus had just preached the Sermon on the Mount. He had, he had, he had in the first, those, those chapters, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, contain the Sermon on the Mount. And now he's coming down off of the mountainside. And the first one to meet him as he was coming down was this leper. And it says in verse 2, a man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, the thing I want you to see first, though, a man with leprosy came. You got to get to Jesus. If you're just waiting for something to happen, you're going to keep on waiting. I want to urge you to get to Jesus. I want to urge you to get to the king. Nothing held this leper back. He came to the Lord. Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cured of leprosy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to tell you, leprosy is a skin disease. And it, it got so bad, it gets so bad that chunks of skin or flesh would literally fall off of your body. It, some people relate it to HIV and AIDS today, although leprosy is far worse. And during the time of Christ, leprosy was considered the worst disease a person could, con could contract. Matter of fact, leprosy is a type of sin. It's not that it's sin. 
It, it rep always represents sin and the worst of sin. The worst of worst sinners were lepers. And that's why there's times in, in American history that someone, when they didn't like, that's a leper, you know, because of the, they're, they're contagious. Stay away from them. And as you know, leprosy is highly contagious, and it's spread through coughing and physical touch, much like COVID-19 today. As a matter of fact, I went online and did a contrast to see about COVID and, and, and leprosy. And the doctors have said that, that I've read, they argue that COVID-19 is more dangerous and more contagious than leprosy. Is there not a reason to get to the king? If this leper got to the king, Jesus wasn't worried about social distancing. He wasn't worried about six foot. Don't get near me now. I can't touch you. No, baby. He just went right up to him and laid his hand on him. And he immediately healed him. Are you kind of getting the picture today? I think it's time for us to get to the king. If we don't, there's an enemy out there that's going to annihilate us. His plan is to kill every one of us. Man and woman, boy, girl, youngster, child. It doesn't make any difference. Male or female. He wants to kill every one of us. It's time to get to the king. Hallelujah. Get to the king. Medical experts say COVID-19 is arguably more dangerous and more contagious than leprosy. And as a result, societal response is to social distance in isolation, wearing masks and gloves. And as you know, it, not, every, not the young people, they don't, they're not aware of leprosy, that they need to be aware. They need to be aware of what leprosy is. And, and if you go on and Google it, it's in 80% of the world yet. 80% of the world, Indonesia, and, and they mentioned those different countries. Matter of fact, as you know, one of the islands in Hawaii was set aside for leper, the leper colony. They were, they were exiled to that island. And so isolation, separation from society is nothing different. That's what that leper was going through in Jesus' time. But he had heard about Jesus, and nothing was going to stop him, not society. You see, it was, it was illegal. It was illegal for him to even come in the presence of society. When he got near people within a certain range, he was to cry out with a loud voice three times, unclean, 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 and people would make a way, and he's coming through. Nobody's going to touch him, just get out of his way. But he was not allowed into town. He was not allowed into places where population. He had to remain at a distance. So I want you to see that he had an urgency to get to the king. If there was ever a time for us to get to the king, it's now. It's time. It's, for us for the, it's time for us to get to the king. For us, like this leper, to kneel before him not before Haman and the devil and give in to him. We're never going to bow to that devil. We're not going to kneel to that evil monster. But we're going to kneel before the king and plead for mercy and his help because he has all power and authority. He is king of kings and lord of lords. He is lord over every disease. So I urge you, as the message came forth today, let's rebuke death and let's claim life. Let's get to the king. Now, a second consideration is the story of the Roman centurion that happened immediately after this. As Jesus healed that leper, he continued his walk and he came down into the city that would be his hometown, uh, Capernaum. And so we find in Matthew chapter 8 the story of the centurion and his, and his encounter with Jesus in Matthew 8, verses 5 through 13. And so the centurion, he came to Jesus. He came to Jesus. He approached Jesus. It says, look, when Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him. Are you seeing the pattern? 
There are multiple, multiple illustrations we could go to, but these are a string in order I just wanted to bring to you today is that from the leper we now go to the centurion. He came to Jesus. He came asking for help. He pleaded saying, Lord, my servant, in verse 6, is at home paralyzed and in terrible suffering. Wouldn't you do that on the behalf of someone you love? And you have been doing it. Many of you have been doing it. Lord, I need your help. My servant, he's he not able to come to you. I, I'm coming to you on his behalf. Can't you see the prayer in the centurion's act? He is there representing the one that needs divine help. And so we come to the Lord. In verse 7, the Lord offers to go healing. I will go and heal him. The centurion does not feel uh, worthy. He just said, Lord, I don't deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. Let's trust God to say the word. As you represent others, as you come to God for your cousin, as you come to God for our brothers and sisters, as we come to God for family members, as we come to God for our needs, let us just call upon him with that kind of faith and trust that that centurion soldier had and say, God, just say the word. King Jesus, say the word and it will be done. And my servant will be healed. This servant, this centurion went to the king on the behalf of his servant. He didn't have to, but he loved his servant. He had compassion. It would be much like an employee today, a, a, an, an employer coming to the Lord on the behalf of an employee and saying, Lord, are there people that work for you? Then you intercede for them. You call upon God for them. Beg for God's mercy and his intervention to heal them. So this man interceded. He went to the king on the behalf of someone who couldn't go for himself. The principle is there. We don't need to, to draw it out. You can see that we are to be like the centurion get to the king and bring someone to the Lord that can't get there on their own. This man was paralyzed. He couldn't do it. Do you know someone like that? Do you know that someone that's bed fast? I do. I went and saw him yesterday. He's my brother. He hasn't walked in a year and a half. My son Chuck and I went to go see him and to bring him some gifts and to tell him that we loved him. And I begged him. I said, son, uh, brother, please, I'm praying that you'll get up and walk. But I want to bring him to Jesus. I want to take him to Jesus. We need to get to King Jesus. Jesus honored the faith of the centurion in verse 13. He just simply said to him, go, it will be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that very hour. You see, we need to get to King Jesus on the behalf of those that we care about or those that are in need and can't get to the Lord on their own. May we too get to the King on the behalf of another. May we too believe God for a miracle for someone else like we're praying for Rosie. I want you to know, Irma, you're not here today, but I know you're hearing, you're hearing this message. And I want you to know that we are concerned for Rosie and we have not given up. We have been interceding, begging for mercy, pleading for divine intervention because we want that sister healed, your sister, our sister in the Lord, to be healed by the grace and the mercy of God. Can everyone say amen? amen. May we believe God for a miracle for someone else. We need to get to the king. We need to come to him in faith believing that what we ask for, we too shall receive. Amen. Well, then let's consider the story of four men who brought their paralyzed friend to Jesus. Now, that's in Matthew's gospel as well, but I selected the reading out of Mark chapter 2. The crowd was so large around Jesus, they couldn't get near to hear him. They couldn't get near him. But that didn't stop the four. And someone in their group had an idea. And they said, let's, 
lower our friend down through the roof. In verse 4, they made an opening in the roof and lowered the paralyzed man on a mat in the presence of Jesus. The four men did everything they knew to do to get their immobile friend into the presence of the king who has power to heal and work miracles. In verse 12, we see that Jesus performed a miracle and the man got up off of his mat and he walked out of the house in full view of everyone which amazed them all, and it prompted them to praise God and say, we have never seen anything like this. May we too get to the king, people that need healing and miracles. You see, these four men represent prayer groups, small groups of believers who bring others to the king in prayer. And so you as a family, I want to encourage you to pray. There is power in your prayer. There's power. Pray together. Get a hold of God. Somehow get into the presence of the king and bring the person that you're praying for into the midst of that prayer. This little girl here today, this young woman, has a friend. She's not fully recovered. This family has got to get in the presence of the king and to follow through on the needs of this person. You see to it that it gets done. You see to it that it gets done. These four, there's four in your family, and intercede for this friend that God will save her and bring her through this, this crisis and heal her body. There are people in need that are depending on us to get them into the presence of the king. Can you say amen? Oh, do you know of someone that you need to get to the king? I want to urge you to get them to the king. If we don't, people will continue to suffer and some may even die. So it's imperative that we get to the king. Let me share one more story of a person coming to the king. The story of the woman with the issue of blood in Matthew 9, verses 20 through 22. This is the story of a woman who had been suffering from an ongoing flow of blood. It was a female problem, and she was not permitted to touch anyone. She had to social distance as well. She could not especially touch a man of God because that would have made that person unclean and had, would have had to go through days of rituals to become uh, clean again ritually. But this woman had suffered for 12 years. And according to St. Mark, she spent all she had on physicians in verse 26. And her condition didn't improve, but got worse. So the woman had nothing to lose, but everything to gain. In Matthew 9, 21, it says, she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, and the King James, the hem of his garment, I will be healed. If I can only just touch the hem of his garment, if I can only just touch his cloak, I'll be healed. The Greek that is written here is in the continuous tense, which means she continually said within herself, if I can get to Jesus and touch his garment, I will be healed. If, if I can just touch his garment, I will be healed. If I can only just get the crowd around Jesus was so great, the only way she knew to get there, she got down on her hands and knees and crawled down through the, through the, the feet of the people till she got down to Jesus' cloak at the very bottom and, and had enough faith to reach out and touch that garment. And immediately, virtue went out of Jesus and this woman was instantaneously healed. She got to the king. She got to the king. She was willing to do whatever it took to get to the king. Are you, are you willing to do whatever it takes to get to the king? You can't just sit anymore and just expect things are going to happen. Well, if you do, things could get a whole lot worse for you before it gets better. In verse 22, Jesus saw this woman. He encouraged her and said, Take heart, daughter. Your faith has healed you. Take heart, daughter. Your faith has healed you. 
Oh, I tell you, we have to, we've got to get to the king. We've got to get to the king. We've got to get to the king. He will heal us. He will save us. He will deliver us. He will rescue us. He will have mercy on us. He will help us. Let's get to the king. Father, today, as we come to the close of this message, and, and we've tried to just present a simple story of how Esther was used by, by, by you to save her entire people. But she went reluctantly, but it was Mordecai that said, you've been brought to the kingdom for such an hour as this. This is the time. You must get to the king. You must get to the king. And so, God, we pray right now that you will hear our request, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Eugene has just handed me a note and said Irma called to inform us that Sister Rosie's condition had deteriorated so severely that the doctor called to inform her. Her heart is not functioning well, and she's regurgitating fluid. She pleaded that we pray even more for her. I want you to stand right now. I want you to stand, and I'm not going to pray until I hear you call out to God and beg for mercy and plead for help. Will you take a moment? I want you to vocally begin to cry out to God and cry out for her right now. This message has been designed for her. Would you do that today? Will you plead for her? Will you plead for her right now? And if you want to kneel, you're welcome to kneel and bow in the presence of the king. I want you to call out to God. I want you to call, call out to God. Call out to God. Call out to King Jesus right now. Call out to King Jesus right now. Call out to King Jesus right now. Get to the king. Get to the king right now. Get to the king right now. We need to get to the king right now. Oh, Lord, we're calling out to you right now. You've given this message to us today. You're inviting us to come into your presence. You have invited us to come into your presence. We're in your presence even now, Lord. And we're asking you to save your people. We're asking you to save Rosie, Lord. We're asking you to spare her life. We're asking you to divinely intervene. Heal her body. Lord, come against the power of death. Come against the power of this pandemic. Come against, oh Lord, the power of this infirmity, this virus, oh Lord. Break it. Break its hold. Heal Rosie. Heal Rosie, Lord. Heal. Heal Rosie, oh Lord. Lord, we're asking you to do a miracle. We're asking for a miracle. Lord, we believe you today. We believe in miracles. We believe in you, Jesus. We believe in you. The Apostle Paul said you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can think or imagine. And Lord, healing is not even in that realm. It is something that you have spoken about. It isn't something that we haven't imagined. We know you can do it. It isn't something we have to dwell and think about. We know you can do it. We just spoke today in this church about a leper. We spoke about a man that was paralyzed. We spoke about another man on a mat that was paralyzed. We spoke about a woman with an issue of blood. And you healed every one of them that came to you. We are coming to you today, King Jesus, on the behalf of Rosie Castro and asking you to heal her. Heal. Reverse this condition. Reverse this condition. Break the gloom. Break the darkness and let the glorious light of Jesus Christ come into that hospital room even now. And let there be a miracle, we pray. Let there be a miracle. 